you're able to understand anything I say. Uh, okay. So, uh, so yeah, just uh, get started. I think we'll get started. Or not? Yeah. All right, so disclaimer at first. So, like I said, I have a cold. Um, so this is, for me, this is an experiment. I like to program, obviously, everybody likes to program. I like to debug a lot. I thought it would be nice to talk about bugs. I'm not sure how to do that, actually. Uh, so, like I said, it's an experiment. Uh, I'm not an expert. That's the most important thing. There are a lot of experts in the room. Ask them, believe them. Don't believe anything I say. With that said, believe everything I say. Um, the key word in this slide, at least, uh, Okay, it's, it's, it's a lame joke, but the key, key word here is story, you know, so I'm not sure this is working very well, so uh, let's just do this. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. So uh, the key word here is, is story, you know, so to me at least, uh, every bug has a story, you know, it has a story behind it, and the context and the story of the bug is very important. You know, I just noticed because I have a cord with cold and I'm doing this, the next speaker is going to have hell. Sorry? About About, oh, this, there, yeah, excellent, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, working well. Yeah, so uh, like I said in the description, which probably never, uh, nobody read, um, these are all bugs that I came across while doing some stuff. And I tried to rewrite them for a presentation, write a story around them to be kind of funny, maybe, hopefully. And uh, maybe somebody will learn anything, I don't know. I will certainly learn, to learn something, like uh, not to do this uh, ever again. Um, okay, so, you know, we, uh, because of the Duke and the Duke title, I thought, uh, let's uh, do a whole scena scenario about Duke. So, yeah, this is Duke, King Duke, you know, he's bored. Uh, he doesn't know what to do with his life, you know, so he tries some stuff, still bored, you know, tries some other stuff, fucking bored, you know. So he just says, you know, fuck it, I'm going to go to sleep. So while he's sleeping, you know, um, Duke gets an epiphany, a dream, you know, a vision, I'm going to go to space. Not sure why, but whatever. It works. Yeah? I also found these, uh, it's easy to find these pictures, you know, on the internet, so just use them. Yeah? So Duke, uh, you know, he decides, okay, let's, I'm going to go to space. So, you know, he goes uh, online and learns how to go to space and orders some stuff. And uh, the stuff, uh, I think it comes, yeah, it comes along. He starts building. Yeah? And, uh, you know, that's when uh, shit uh, starts to go sideways. Sorry? Yeah? This way? Yeah? This one, this sounds nicer. It's wrong. Yeah? Yeah, okay. This is hard. On the, on the t-shirt, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's buzzing because of this thing. Ah, excellent. Yes, so uh, I have a cold, you know, I can't think straight. So, uh, this better, yeah? Excellent, thank you. So, uh, you know, he starts building, and uh, this is the first bug, you know. So I have a couple of bugs, and this is the first bug. So the first bug, or the first system he tries to build, is the fuel gauge, you know. Uh, very simple system. I'm not sure why Duke is doing it in, uh, you know, with a program, but, you know, just because he can, and because it works for my presentation. So uh, he builds a fuel gauge. Um, small piece of program. Small program. Small piece of code. Program. Small program. Um, and it monitors the fuel, you know, as you're filling it up, etc. Suddenly, your fuel tank overflows. And I know fuel tanks don't look like this, but this works for my code. It's, it's much easier, you know, so just bear with me, yeah? So um, it overflows. Duke doesn't understand. Why, why does it overflow? You know, it's a very simple program, you know. It's just, it calculates the cylindrical uh, volume every time you fill some fuel in, you know. Uh, and it calculates the deltas, and then this doesn't make any sense, I know. But okay, so let's just look at some code. You know, it's pretty easy, actually. So the, the volume of a cylinder is basically the area of a, of a circle times the height. Very simple. I think it's, uh, yeah, there. Calculate fuel volume. That's it, you know? As you can see, I use the pi, the Unicode pi for pi, which I'm very proud of. Yes, thank you, thank you. Yeah. So uh, it looks a bit ugly, but okay. But, uh, whatever. So it's very simple, you know? And you fill some uh, fuel in, you know, and with the function fill, you say, okay, I filled, I don't know, one centimeter, okay, let's calculate one centimeter, add it to the total, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it starts to go wrong, you know. It overflows, like I said. So, uh, so Duke, he writes some uh, test code, which, which I never do, actually, but uh, test code. And um, 
he prints out, uh, okay, in retrospect, I should have maybe printed out the values, but it doesn't matter. So he chooses the fill rate of uh, 100, you know, 100 centimeters, one meter, for example, for per second or something, and he calculates the values, and it works. He doesn't understand why it works, or he's glad that it works, but why doesn't it work when in, in a real-world scenario, yeah? He does another experiment with 10, you know, even less, and it doesn't work. And it not only doesn't work, you know, it's, it prints out a value which is less than the total value should be, you know. I think by two or something. And again, maybe I should have put that on the slides, but, you know. Like I said, this is new experimental shit. So um, it doesn't work. And, okay, he starts looking at the code again. I'm not sure which slide is next. Okay, let's go back. He starts looking at the code again, you know. He can't understand why it doesn't work. He starts debugging. Um, I'm not sure how to explain how I debug this, but uh, he starts debugging, okay. He's debugging. And it uh, turns out, it's something very simple, something, one of the th things, everybody knows, everybody understands, but nobody applies, you know. Um, and if you look at the code, you know, so if you look at it, yeah, yeah, I'm not uh, duplicating the screen, so I have to do this. So if you look at the code, at the top, we're using a lot of floats and ints and such, but you look at the methods, everything, or almost everything, is a double, you know. Instead of one line where we uh, cast it to a float and add it to yet another double. So what we have here is the failure to communicate. What we have here is, uh, is uh, what's it called? Uh, sorry? We do have a bug. Yes, thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> but what is the bug is uh, you give a float to a double, and then you do some calculations on it as if it is a double, and then you return it. And in, I don't know, 99 of 100 cases, this will work excellent, you know. But I chose these values explicitly to make a break, you know. And that's what happens, actually, you know. I, we widen the, the flow to a double. We do some calculations on it. And then we return it as a double, and then we cast it back to a float, which is not the same as doing the same exact calculations on a float. Everybody knows this, but, uh, you know, it's a bitch to find these kind of bugs. So that's the first bug. Feel, uh, Duke fixes it. On to the next bug. Yeah, not sure. Uh, yeah, so uh, what's the second most important thing for a rest space flight? Um, yeah, so to me, or you know, to work with this uh, uh, narrative story, it's an in flight entertainment system. It's the most important thing, it's the second most important thing. So Duke thought, you know, I'm going to build myself an in flight entertainment system. I don't want to be bored on, uh, on my way to whatever. Yeah, so he starts building something, and uh, you know Duke likes to read a lot. So uh, he made uh, he started out with a book list, a huge book list. Um, by the way, all of this code is going to be you can download it somewhere. So, um, and uh, you know he tested it; it works. You know, kind of. You know, and uh, just before uh, you know he's, st he's starting to, to to do the final preparations to go to space. Effective Java third edition comes out. You know which deserves an applause, I think. But, you know. So uh, he added, adds it to the, to the book list, and uh, he doesn't see it in his system for some reason. He doesn't know why. And uh, this, this is basically how the, how the, how the list uh, should look, you know. And uh, at the top, that's, that's the format of every line. So you've got a title and a from and a to. It's basically just a huge text file with a lot of books, you know. And you have the title of the book, and then you know, okay, it starts at byte, I don't know. So here everything starts at the same byte because I was too lazy. But it starts at byte 33, for example, it's at ends at byte 45, which is a very short book. Yeah? But he doesn't see effective Java. He doesn't know why he doesn't see effective Java. Why the fuck? So he starts looking at his code. So some easy stuff. I'm going to skip some of the stuff because it's, not, uh, it's necessary for debugging, but it's going to be boring if I say everything. Uh, so he just reads in the file. He parses it. And we're going to look how we... I think. Yeah. Is this readable, actually? Excellent. <laughs> I'm very sorry. I, uh, I tried making it as big as I could. So this is not going to work, actually, if it's not readable. Uh, nobody can read this? Not even people on the front row? Yeah. OK. Sorry, people. In the, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm very sorry. So, uh, so yeah. 
he does some uh, basic, this is basically, uh, you know, like script parsing, interpretive parsing. This is very simple stuff, you know. You just, you, you get a, a character buffer with all the characters, and you, then you loop every, every, uh, over every character. Is it a letter? Okay, is it that kind of stuff. Is it an allowed character? Then I add it. Is it not an allowed character? Then I break the program, yeah? So it looks very simple, yeah? I think. For the, for the people in the front row, it looks very simple at least, you know? But, uh, uh, yeah. So um, Duke, you know, he starts looking at the list more more closely at the output of the, the list of books we do have, you know, not the ones we don't have. And he notices something: is this is the li last book of the list we actually have, the beloved by I don't know, Tony Morrison? Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. Sorry. So something goes wrong, or. It's an educated, uh, I know what's wrong with the bug, of course, but an educated guess would say, okay, something goes wrong either with the end of this line or something in the beginning of the next line or from this line on forward. And if you look at the, really? Okay. Uh, if you look at the, this, the, the one below, the blue line, it's Jane Eyre or Eyre uh, and Charlotte Bronte. You can see the E with the, I don't know what it's called, so... But if you see that one, it looks peculiar, you know. I mean, uh, even Note++ says this is not cool. So uh, we go back and we look at the code. Yeah, I'm going to speed this up a little bit because I'm running out of time and the other bugs are more interesting. So basically, this, the idea behind this <laughs> uh, is for the people who can't see the first line above, we're using a character set of UTF-8, yeah? And that's, that's the incorrect character set. The actual character set should be something like ISO blah, 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 blah. And the problem with this is here, here, this one. Well, uh, not so uh, clever. So there, you can see we, we do a lot of the character. It's, it's digit, it's, it's white space, that kind of stuff. And that, that stuff only tests what is actually being parsed. It doesn't test what the byte uh, code underneath is. You know? And you parse it with the incorrect uh, character set. So uh, when, you, when you, yeah, you, know, you, you see it a lot when you do it in Notepad or something, you open the file with the incorrect uh, character set, and you see those you know, uh, rhombuses with, uh, with, with question marks in them. And that's an invalid character. So that's why the, uh, why the application breaks. So yeah, Duke changes the character set and uh, everybody is happy. So, oh yeah. so Duke my, uh, manages to get space, or you know, lift off. And then another uh, program that's actually important. And uh, this time it really is important, you know. It's, it's kind of like a radar, you know. You don't want, want to be a... So he doesn't want to collide with any asteroids or whatever, space junk. So he builds an, uh, a radar, you know, as a collision detection system. Uh, but you know, Duke lives in 2D space, so he's only doing it for 2D, which is much easier. Um, which, and this, I'm, yeah, this is not readable at all, I know. But anyway, so the problem is, you know, the, the system, it checks for collisions, and it says, okay, an incoming asteroid, you're not going to collide with it. And he starts colliding with it, you know. And it keeps happening, keeps happening, keeps happening. And as you can imagine, it's annoying. So um, he looks at the code. Can anybody read this? Any rows at all, actually? Yeah. I'm going to look to you. You can read this. <laughs> I'm really sorry, guys. I, uh, I'm not sure what to do. I could, I could do that. <laughs> So I'm going to try to read uh, the important bits, but like I said, I'm not mirroring the, the monitor, so I'm going to do this kind of stuff because the microphone is taped here. Sorry? Don't jump anymore. Yeah, I'm not going to jump anymore. Yeah, okay. So that's certain. So um, how, how it works, actually. How much time do I have? Uh, ten minutes. Uh, okay. So how it works is we basically just plot two lines, uh, one from... Uh, from the spaceship to, to your direction, and one from the asteroid to its uh, direction, and we just see if they intersect. We see the point of intersection, and then we calculate, based on our speed and the asteroid speed, when the asteroid will hit that point and when we will hit that point. 
very simple. It's, it's like you know what they do with the uh, ships, you know, sailing ships and that kind of stuff on a, on a big map and compasses and the cool stuff, you know. Which is actually what I did to, to do this, you know. So uh, because the actual bug was in 3D and uh, that would be very difficult to explain uh, because I don't understand very well myself. So uh, so that's basically what we do here. Yeah. Um, so the important part of this equation, we just assume the first part works, because it does work, I know that, and we are running out of time. So the first part, we assume that it works, yeah? The two lines before the if statement, those are the important lines for us. So that's basically, we know that there gonna, there's going to be a collision, we're going to calculate the collision of both uh, the, the speeds. Uh, now the time to arrive to the collision point for the ship and for the asteroid, yeah? I think this is more readable. Okay, we're going to skip this one. So, uh, sorry, I'm not doing that on purpose, but it was important. Yeah, I think this one is uh, more readable. This is important. So, this this is basically, you know, you just calculate distance between the, the ship and uh, and the asteroid and the collision point, and uh, you know, you divide it by the time, and you do the same for the asteroid. You can see that the functions are slightly different. You know, they're basically the same. Mathematically speaking, they're actually, actually exactly the same. Yeah. Um, I don't remember. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and here lies the problem. Um, because we're running out of time, we're going to do this quickly. So here, here lies the problem. Um, this is a mistaken case of operator precedence. Um, an operator precedence, in this context, shouldn't really matter, you know, because you're basically doing the same mathematical operation. You're actually doing exactly the same mathematical operation. Does anybody know why this is good? It doesn't work? Anybody? No? No? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so, unfortunately, you can't see this slide very well, but the values I chose, I chose them very particularly. So, uh, if you can look at the code later, just test it out. And one of these, I think the one on the top, will actually return zero. And the one at the bottom will return the actual value. And both should actually return the actual value. And the reason for that is, you know, because we're doing something different with the precedence of the operators. And the, the one on the top, we're calculating what's between the brackets first, and we're dividing it by two, and then we're subtracting it from the distance ship. And that results, in this case, it overflows because, because it's a float, and it, is, you know, it results in a zero. If you use double for the same thing, you will get the same values. But, uh, you know, that's not the bug. The bug is, the, this is the actual bug, you know, the problem with operator precedence. You know, you think you're doing something fancy, mathematically speaking, and such, and just, you know, shoot yourself in the foot, which I did, actually. So, uh, yeah, the problem here is we do, we're using different equations. You know, we should either, either use the same equation for both, uh, the, the same correct equation for both, or the same wrong equation for both, preferably the correct one. So uh, that's that. The last one, I think, is more interesting. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. So yeah, what's the most important thing on a space flight? And I found this cool picture. I hope anybody, people can read it. Let's take a look at it. One guy in the front row can read it. And he's married, I think, so uh, that helps. So yeah, so uh, so yeah, the Duke is uh, you know he's lonely in space. He wants to uh, look at a picture of his wife, which people tend to do, I think, when they're lonely, or not, or curse her. I don't know, but he wants to look at a picture of his wife. And he built a fancy program to do that for him uh, because, you know, he's Duke. He's the king of Java or whatever, and he programs everything. And as such, he does that. And this is what he gets, you know. And, uh, I don't know about you, but it doesn't look correct, you know. So you start looking at the code. So, uh, which I think isn't, okay, this is readable, but this doesn't do very much. It's your main function. You say display image. I think this is more readable. Oh, uh, less readable, sorry. Yeah, this is it. Um, how much time do I have, uh, Mario? Five minutes. Five minutes. Five more minutes. So, yeah. So, um, he reads an image, you know, he converts it to a buffered image. I'm not sure what that does. Let's check it here. Oh. Um, yeah, I didn't include that one, but okay. So basically, the convert image calls this function. Yeah. So the image is a YUV image. If anybody knows what it is, it's kind of a weird format where they put the bytes in a very peculiar order. 
and you have to convert them to RGB to be able to view them on a the computer. No? Um, this is basically how you do it. This is just you know lifted from Wikipedia, so it's not very complicated. Uh, it's not very important actually to the bug. But what he does here um, on the third line or the second line of the function itself, you can see you get a byte buffer as a, as, a, as inputs, you know, and we create an int buffer from the byte buffer. You know, this is just one of the features of byte buffers. Yeah. But what you see there is he does a duplicate on the byte buffer. And that's very important because if anybody could see the previous slide, um, no. yeah. So I can't jump anymore. But if you look at the top right there, when we create the the, uh, the byte buffer, we created the byte buffer as little endian. Yeah. But one of this is a Java bug, you know. So it's not my personal bug, you know. This was actually in Java itself. It's still there, I think. Uh, when you do a duplicate on a byte buffer, you do a duplicate. Uh, you duplicate everything except the endianness of the byte buffer. So this is a big endian byte buffer, and we write to it as if it is a big endian byte buffer. So that's why RGBA gets twisted around to something like BARG or something like that. But that's why you get that uh, weird uh, lady. Uh, yeah. You just uh, duplicate it with the right uh, endianness and everything is cool. And that's uh, what you get. So yeah, that's uh, that's it. Um, links for the for the code and such. And uh, if you have any questions, which I doubt. Thank you. Five minutes worth of method handles, I guess. <laughs> but it's it's a a it's scratching really. the surface. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Sorry, Mom. You can read my book, so. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was good. Great. Really? Yeah. Oh, thank you. It's easy enough for me. I believe so, yeah. So, thank you. Bless for him. I'm not going to come to lunch. Okay. Okay. Bless for thee. I'm not. Yeah. Bless for thee. Yeah. 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 Yeah.